Welcome to Seacrest Technical Spotlight, where we show you specific how-to instructions to help with patient care and the simple use of our innovative products. As always, if you are unsure of how to perform any of these tasks, please consult with one of our professionally trained field service technicians. Hi, my name is Lou Bikovitz. I'm with Seacrest Industries. I'm a field rep. I work out of Southern California. Today, we're going to go through how to re replace and swap out the three-way valve. The first step in swapping out the three-way valve is to turn the O2 supply pressure off at the wall. Once we do that, we want to make sure that the door handle is in the closed position. With the handle in the off position, we want to remove the line on the right-hand side down here so that we bleed all of the O2 out of the control system. You'll feel the O2 coming out of here. It may take a minute or two for it to completely bleed out. When there's no more O2 coming out, everything is good, and then we will proceed with removing and swapping out the three-way valve. Next, we're going to remove the lower hinge cover, or as we call it, the hockey puck. I do recommend that you put on gloves, as underneath this hockey puck is a red Crytox grease, which does tend to stain. It's difficult to get off your hands, and it's very difficult to get off clothing. So be very careful uh, around that. Now, using our larger Allen wrench, we will remove the Allen screw holding the hockey puck on. We want to put our one hand under the hockey puck to support it, because once the Allen screw comes out, this hockey puck will drop straight down. And as you can see, that is the red Crytox that will stain clothes and skin. Next, we're going to take our smaller Allen wrench and remove the two remaining Allen screws that hold the cover plate over the three-way valve. Once these have been removed and set aside, we carefully remove the cover plate. And then with a little pair of needle nose, we can pull straight forward and the three-way valve will come right out. Now that we have the old three-way removed, we want to take our new three-way out of the package. Here's the new three-way valve. What we need to do before we insert it is to put just a little bit of Crytox grease on each one of these O-rings. So we'll put a little bit of grease on our finger. In holding our three-way valve, we'll just put a very, very light coating on both O-rings. Once that's done, we'll take our three-way, reinsert it back into the safety block, take our cover plate, put it back over the three-way valve, and then we re-insert the two Allen screws that are holding it in to hold the cover plate on. We'll put the last Allen screw in the cover plate. We want to snug these up. They don't have to be super tight, but we do want them snug. Once we've got those done, we're going to take our hockey puck, slide it up, take our Allen bolt, and put it through, and get it started. And with our Allen wrench, we'll tighten this down. And now our three-way valve is replaced. Now that we have our line hooked back up and our O2 turned on, we're going to remove the shim that comes in the three-way valve kit and check and for proper clearance between the hockey puck and the safety block. We want to insert the shim between the hockey puck and the safety block. It should insert fully and come all the way through snugly. We don't want too much play, but it should go all the way through. As you can see, we're, we're too tight. We can't insert that at all. So now we're going to go through the adjustment procedure to get the proper spacing. Taking our large Allen wrench, we want to loosen two Allen screws underneath the safety block. Now 
once these are loosened, we want to insert our shim. Pushing the safety block forward so that it's against our shim, we want to look through this hole and make sure that the brass pin inside is lined up. Once that's lined up, we want to tighten our two Allen bolts back down. We should now be able to remove the shim, and as you can see, it goes through with just a nice, slightly snug fit. Once we've removed the shim, we want to go ahead and finish snugging down our Allens. And once again, we want to check, looking in this hole, to make sure that our pin, which is going to come up and secure the door so it cannot be opened while the chamber is pressurized, and make sure that it is centered in this hole so that it does, has freedom to movement and does, and does not catch on either side. If everything is lined up properly, then our job is done. We have successfully swapped out and aligned the three-way valve and safety block. We have one final step left, and that is adjusting the stud, contacting and activating the three-way valve itself. We will now go through that adjustment procedure. We're now ready for our final adjustment, and that is to adjust the stud actually activating the three-way valve. First, we need to open the door assembly. Then we need to turn on our O2 source our line that we disconnected at the very beginning is still disconnected. At this point, we need a 9 16 inch wrench and we want to loosen this nut. We want to then screw the stud in so that when the door is hinges closed, it does not make contact with the three-way valve. So we want to go ahead and screw it in just a little bit more. From here, we want to screw it out an eighth to a quarter of a turn at a time, and then check till it just hits the pin. We now want to turn the chamber on and we want to continue to turn the stud counterclockwise like we would be unscrewing a screw an eighth to a quarter of a turn at a time until we hear O2 coming out of this fitting. We hear our O2 start to come out. So just a little bit more. And we've got it. Now we very carefully tighten our nut, snug it back up with our wrench, check to make sure we've got our flow. At this point, we want to grab our line reconnect it, turn the chamber off. Now what we need to do is we actually need to close the chamber up and pressurize it. Now we have our three-way replaced, everything is aligned. We're down to our final verification and that is actually closing the chamber door, turning the chamber on, pressurizing it, and verifying that the safety pin does come out and engage the hockey puck so that the door cannot accidentally be opened while the chamber is pressurized. We will do this three times just to verify that it is extending and retracting as it's supposed to.
To find out more about any of our full suite of hyperbaric products, please visit us on the web at www.seacristusa.com. Our team is standing by to serve you.